Hey, this is Glenn and Cameron with another edition of How to Make a Living Without a Job. Sometimes you have to make a way. You might be afraid, you might be scared, you might have no clue what the next step is, but you have to make a way. I have a client, we've been going back and forth for the last 10 months about eBay, Amazon, didn't want to do it, refused to do it. Just for full disclosure, eBay, Amazon, I consider them necessary evils in your business if you're a reseller. I mean, really, you just virtually have no choice for certain merchandise. So we went back and forth, back and forth, and then I finally got down to the problem why they couldn't make it happen. And it was like, oh, that's it. But before we get into that, I got a special offer for you. I'm making this one time special offer and it's currently $29.95. It will go up to $60 after this campaign, which ends Sunday. You get one month free of Hustler University and this badass t-shirt. Click the bar below to get in on the action. Trust me, it's worth it. And you get a cool ass t-shirt out of the deal. Once I figured out what this guy's issue was, it was fear. When you're dealing with a fear mindset, it pushes away an abundant mindset. So we, we crunk it down, he's a consulting customer, does storage auctions, and I just told him one day, and I got pissed off. I was like, dude, you've got to make a fucking way. And the thing is, he is slightly illiterate. So when you start doing eBay, Amazon, there's listing. You got a list. You have to have really nice product descriptions. You have, it's part of the deal. So he has this huge challenge. And I was like, okay, so that's the problem? He's like, that's the problem. All right, well, making a way doesn't mean that you have to do it. I was like, you can get someone to do that for you. Many people with your situation have started companies and gone on to have fantastic lives because they got an advocate. So you need to find an advocate, someone you can be brutally honest with, and boom, get them to do this. Well, he had an advocate, he had a girlfriend. She wanted to do it, he pushed her out. He didn't want to admit that this was a problem. So. Once he got over his fear, then the possibilities of making the way just opened up because he got the girlfriend and the girlfriend got an employee and they trained the employee. So he didn't have one person. He had two people doing that thing that he couldn't do. Making a way isn't necessarily you doing it. See, that's one of the things that kills entrepreneurs. Me, 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 I, 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 I. It doesn't work all that way all the time. So as a hustler, you have to learn how to make a way. When I was going through an extremely tough period in my life, extremely tough, it was a brutal three years, my mother said, hey, you know, you can come home. And in 15 seconds, I said, no, I'm not coming home. I was like, I need to figure this out because if I come back home, I may never leave again. I've seen that happen to people. And it isn't that these people are stupid. They don't have the capability. They don't have the mindset and the will. Because understand, the difference between someone who's really successful and someone who is living on the streets is marginal. It's mindset. It's an immeasurable attribute of will, tenacity, and determination. So when we were having that conversation, I put myself on the spot because I didn't know what I was going to do, had no clue, I woke up the next day, shit was still the same, and it took me some time, like I said, three years to figure it out. And it was one of the best things that I ever did for myself because there are some people that don't like my blunt manner or my, you know, the reason that you're not successful is because you're a lazy, sorry ass, you're a slack ass. The reason that you don't have the things you want in your life is because you're a scared ass little bitch. I know because I was there. When you are in that space, mentally, you push away success because 
as Buddha said, because, you know, and this is the thing about studying my mentors, like, you know, when I was listening to Earl Nightingale lead the field and he was like, what you become, what, what you think about is what you become. That actually originated with Buddha. And when you are in a sorry state, all you think about is the sorry state. And that's why you have to learn how to push through what I call walking through mud. There's days that you are doing your best. It's just not happening as fast as you want. It's happening, but it's so incremental. It's like the hands on the clock. It's moving, but you look back two seconds later and it looks like it's in the same spot, but it's, it's, that's what I call walking through mud. And you'll have sometimes days like that. Sometimes you'll have weeks like that. Sometimes you'll have months like that. And the thing is, you have to keep pushing. Because what I learned is, when your back's up against the wall, you actually are partially defended. And now you're like, what are you talking about? Think about it. Your back's against the wall. There's only one direction that life can come to you. And that's from the front. You are in a perfect vantage point to see what's coming. When you're actually, your back's not against the wall, you can be attacked from the back, you can be attacked from the side. But when your back's against the wall, all of that stuff dissolves. What's really important, what you need to do is right there in front of your face. And I think that's one of the reasons that a lot of people, when they're faced with a personal crisis, excel and perform like they never did before. Simply put, the blinders were taken off, the minutia of life was removed, and the real of the real was just laid bare. Because if I did not go through that horrible experience, I wouldn't be talking to you now. Because, you know, a lot of people's like, well, who's to say what would happen? Chaos theory, one thing leads to another. You know, the butterfly flaps its wings in the Amazon jungle, and then there's a hurricane in North America. What you do now will affect your tomorrow. So pushing through this mud and keep going on because there's a lot of you out there where things are horrible because we are in one of the trickiest economies I've ever seen. I grew up during the gas crisis of the 1970s. I remember being in the car looking out the back window while we waited to get gas because it was a gas shortage. There's all kinds of things that are going on in the world and it's like two groups of people. There's a group of people right now that are being put upon. They're under so much financial pressure. They're under so much pressure, period, that they can't even see a better way. Their whole thing is, how do I make it to the next day? How do I get enough money to keep my lights from being turned off or my cell phone from being turned off or paying my car insurance so I don't get pulled over and go to jail or, you know, get my license suspended? You know, people are facing these very real crises right now. And the thing is, it doesn't have to be like that. You have to learn how to hustle and make a way. That statement doesn't mean that you have it all figured out. It doesn't mean that you have it all together. Your stuff may be literally in flames. When I was a kid, we lived in a house and the roof was being repaired. So they had taken all the shingles off and there was only the black rolls on there. And it wasn't supposed to rain, but back then, the weather prediction was notoriously wrong. So we're sitting there Saturday morning watching Scooby-Doo eating Fruit Loops. And next thing you know, poosh, ceiling falls in. There's sheetrock and there's all this black stuff all up in our cereal. And what my brother and I did is we just picked out the sheetrock and all the stuff and we kept eating our cereal because it's the only thing we had. It's like when you're put in that situation where either we're going to do this or we're going to do that or we're going to perish, it becomes very clear what you have to do. And there are many people, I feel, who are extremely comfortable in their misery. And what I mean by that is you have television, you have a car. You have a, a decent and nice place to live, but in the pit of your stomach, you're so unhappy. But you don't want to trade your comfortable misery for pure uncomfort. Because that three-year period I went through, it was hell. 
I was uncomfortable in the day. I was uncomfortable at night. I was there was no place that I could go and find any comfort. So it was like either you leave this space or you just learn to accept where you are. And a lot of people, you know, it's like turning uh, lemons into lemonade. I don't actually believe in that. I believe in throwing out the lemons and going out and getting some strawberries and creating that strawberry pie that you want because you have that option. We have a bunch of people who are literally waiting for permission to be successful, waiting on permission for someone to say that it's okay to go out and chase your dreams. And they're just kind of waiting. They're kind of in stasis. They're just like, you know, walking through, not even mud, because if you walk through mud, at least you're making forward progress. They're just kind of like in suspended animation of life. For 10 years, they've been in the same place. 20 years, they've been in the same unhappy place because they haven't developed the right mindset. When I was going through that stuff, I, you know, as I talked in the, the Hustler Mindset Project, I created Scheme Incorporated and I got myself a job just, you know, by creating a way. And many people think that's unethical and I'm cool with that. It's one of the best things I ever did because I created a situation that opened up a totally new world for me. A totally new world for me. I was able to meet people, learn new things, new learn, learn new skill sets, and just see life on a different level. And that's another reason about being in uh, co miserably comfortable is you kind of put a fence around your opportunities. It's like, well, you know, you hear people say, you know, I'll, I'll talk about the black community and the white community. And for, the, for most of you, I don't really believe in the percepts of race per se. But for the sake of this conversation, I'll use those terms. If you live in the United States of America, there's no black community. There's no white community. There's no Asian community. There's just Americans living in different places. And as an American, if you have the right mindset, you have the right resources, you can live anywhere you want. Understand that there are many people that don't know that they don't know that it's in the front of their face It's evident and then this is another part about tribalism There are many people who are afraid to leave their tribe Because it's almost like you're selling out your tribe, you know going back to high school There was a table of the jocks. There was a table of the popular people. There was the white people there were black people and Have you ever noticed? If you're a certain age, because, you know, kids of the day don't operate like that, that if you're in one of those tribes and you leave that table to go sit with another tribe, you will get called out by your tribe. Why are you going over there to sit with them? Now, understand, there's no intellectual discourse. There's no one that's saying what's wrong with sitting with them. No, 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 no. It's just you got up. You left the tribe. You are Benedict Arnold. You have betrayed the tribe and we hate you. And no one's really thought about what's the real problem. It's habit. People in the United States of America segregate themselves because it's habitually the norm. Whenever you get people from different backgrounds and you put them in a situation where they're, the walls are broken down, it's amazing how what a good time people frequently have. One of the greatest examples of that is the military. And it's just like, whoa, these people are cool. Wow. Because they're put in situations where all of those habitual boundaries are broken down. Because I said something really stupid when I was in the military and I got checked hard by my staff sergeant. It's like, we don't play that shit here. Get yourself together, troop. And that's the thing. Many people are following a script of a play that they don't even want to watch. But because it's habitually normal, that's what they keep doing. And then they wonder, why doesn't it work out? Why, isn't, why aren't things getting better? Why, um, why can't I have the things I want in life? You know, I look at people totally different because I'm different. When you go through these things, when you start to make a way, and understand, this will be fundamentally hard because you're not used to making a way. And I'll say this. When the economy went sideways, 
there was a group of people already at the bottom. Shit didn't change for them. It was like, it was already bad. That nothing really changed for them. Then there was a group of people that were in the middle that were pushed into the bottom and they freaked out. And understand that downward trajectory is going to continue for certain groups of people because the economy, as I said before, is very tricky. It's a very tricky situation. There are people who are making billions of dollars and there are people who can't even get a slice of cheese right now. And it's all a matter of mindset, skill sets, and claiming the opportunities that are there for you. And that's what I like about hustling. Um, there are people who here on YouTube, it's like, hey, Glendon's not a reseller. I never claimed to be a reseller, so I don't even know where that came from. I used to be a reseller a long time ago. But since I like evolution, since I embrace change, I never said anything like I'll never be anything other than a reseller because as the world goes forward, that's going to change because one of the reasons that it's so easy to be a reseller is because we live in the United States of America where the abundance is ridiculous. You go to other countries, you have families living in upscale apartments the size of a walk-in closet of one of these luxury houses or mansions. You go to other countries. I was having lunch a few weeks ago with someone who just came. He's been all over the world and he was saying something because, you know, I hear people on YouTube and it's really interesting when you have friends who are exposed. I got a friend that lives in Switzerland right now. I got a friend that lives in Sweden. Most places in the world do not have the reliable grid that we do. If you're in the Philippines, you know, you could be on the Internet. Two days, your shit can go down because the power grid went down or there was a flood. You know, people with VAs and stuff, that shit happens. You think your VA is gone? They ain't gone. They just can't log on because the grid is down. Wi-Fi that we have that's ubiquitous, that you, if you're in the major metropolitan area and you can go 2.5 miles and hit a free Wi-Fi signal, that's not like that in the rest of the world. It's not even close to like that. Wi-Fi is iffy, and if it's on, it's weak. So understand, the reason that it's easy to be a reseller is because we live in a country of so much vast abundance. And that's going to start changing. You're not going to have people who have a closet full of clothes that they've never worn in it. They're not going to be able to buy that stuff because they won't have the money. Because the thing is, I was on that, that ledge of, you know, with the dollar, gold, and silver. And there was a lot of stuff. And I watched these channels and the prepper channels and everything in the doom. And understand, this thing is going to keep going because it's all about manipulation. Understand, you know, people like, the, you know, when the economy, the shit hits the fan scenario, the grids go down, there's anarchy, there's war in the streets. It's like Mad Max. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And I know a lot of people are like, yeah, it's going to. No, it's not going to happen because it should have happened already. It should have happened 40 years ago. The manipulation, the trickeration, they're going to keep this thing going on because it benefits so many people. Understand those in power. It doesn't benefit them to have a population that doesn't have any money, doesn't have any water, doesn't have any livings. No. By lulling you into that comfortable misery, they can milk you dry forever and keep most of the spoils. It doesn't benefit those in power for everybody to be ass out. It benefits them for you to be poor, but have some coins, some scratch. It doesn't benefit them for you to be destitute understand that that's why you know i looked at it you know i was like stacking up on silver i had gold i was just like okay if stuff truly hits the fan truly hits the fan understand we're all gone because some crazy person's gonna flip a switch and nukes are gonna fly and obliterate humanity that's gonna happen because there's you know at that point that's what's going to happen. That's the, the, the death scenario scenario. So personally, I don't think it's going to happen. And I adjusted my attitude because I started making a way. I changed the mindset because when you listen to that, you get what I call constriction mentality. 
You start thinking scarcity. You start thinking conservation. You don't think grow, gain, abundant. And that's why mindset is so important because you can have two people living in the same house. One is living on a scarcity mindset. One's living on the abundant mindset. And you can see the difference when they walk out the house. Same house, different mindsets. Mindset's super important. So as a hustler, whatever you want to hustle, you have to put it in your mind that you can make a way. There's no options. Give you another example. I trained with some power lifters when I was in Hawaii, a little station in Hawaii, and I was doing squats wrong. You know, I used to take a plank and put it under my heels. And this guy's like, no, 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 you're, no, no, that's wrong, that's wrong. Heels flat, heels flat. And I was like, well, and he told me, he said, the, the reason that you're squatting like that is you lack flexibility in your hips. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yo, hips drop first. Then, you know, I was like, whatever and he worked with me and he told me he said there is no option if you want to be big you want to be strong you must squat it is not optional you must make a way and three weeks later heels flat i was doing it i developed the hex bill and said, that's the mindset that's being open and exposed because you you it certain things are not optional going back to my client when he finally got it his revenues tripled in 90 days. 90 days, his revenues tripled when he finally got it because he made a way and he got out of his way. Understand, your goal as a hustler is to control. Many hustlers have, I'm making it happen, I'm making it rain. I am a joystick hustler. I like toggling that joystick and making shit happen and not being involved. Because that's been my growth in these last five years. Because I used to be the hands-on hustler. I got to make it happen. I got to go to the auctions. I got to buy the stuff. Got to make sure it's shipped. I got I got to. I got. That is very limiting belief. As an I got to hustler, you're going to make maybe six figures and you're going to tap the fuck out. Because your infrastructure is insufficient for further growth. You're not going to get any bigger. You're not going to make any money. And as these internet platforms continue to change, your revenues will go down. Because your infrastructure is not situated for growth. If you want to make it today, you must be a growth-minded hustler. If not, you'll do fine for a limited period of time and then you will backslide. And that's why I tell people, don't be afraid of doing this stuff. And I give you full disclosure. Like I said, Amazon, eBay, they're tricky platforms. They can bite you in the ass if you do the wrong thing. And they both allow customers to bend you over backwards. But it's part of one of the arrows in your quiver of being a hustler in success. Because if you're out buying and selling stuff, you need the platforms. I hate the platforms, but you need them. So... Just something for you to think about when the next time you're saying, I'm not going to do that. Not because the data says, hey, this isn't a good move for your business. I'm with that plan all day long. If the data says, hey, we shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do it. But if you're not doing something because you are afraid, you're not doing something because you don't want to go through the trouble that will clearly benefit your hustling business, you're a dumbass. And you're a scared little bitch. And I'm telling you, scared little bitches die a million times in a lifetime. Every day is a death because they go forward and they shrink back and they, they get that little scared little bitch voice and they don't go forward in life. So I want you to have a life of abundance. I want you to have a life where you can have the things that you want. It's possible even in the matrix because understand, the powers that be, the trickeration and the manipulation, they leave several different levels for you to occupy that is far from the bottom. Because that's how the system's designed. The system is so big. It's like a building. You can have a 200 story building and in that building there could be places that people can hide and create another city because it's so big. That's what you could do in the matrix. Instead of going like, oh shit, I'm fucked.
Oh shit, I'm gonna make it away. I'm gonna do this. I am gonna create my own opportunities. I am going to make a way. Then you figure it out. That is how you become a true hustler. That's the art of hustling. It's not about manipulating people or getting over. It's exploiting yourself and your personal abilities to get all the things that you want. That's how I look at hustling, and it's done a great deal for me. All right, this is Glendon Cameron. I'll see you on the good side.